Hello, come on up, guys. Come on, um, Fox, Ruben, Paris, we're going to take these seats. Good afternoon, everybody. Time for tea. We've had a lot of LGB and other stuff. We're now going to have an hour on tea. Some of us, some of us think it has been a very important couple of years for the tea in LGBT, uh, which was ignored, forgotten, and something happened. Something has happened, and I think quite a lot of what happened is Paris sitting next to me. Somehow, Paris has raised the profile of the issue. We're going to divide this afternoon into, um, we've got 45 minutes, we're going to divide it into three parts. I am going to talk to Paris, and a lot of the things I wanted to ask Paris, you have already asked, so I'll have to think of some other things. Um, then I'm going to talk to Fox and Ruben. Fox, do we call you Fox or Raphael, by the way? Please call me Fox. Fox, good, okay. Uh, Fox and Ruben, and then I'm going to open up to the rest of you uh, to talk uh, and ask your own, your own questions to this, uh, to this great team. Um, a lot has changed since the 1980s, folks, and I, I, you know, I was someone who was kind of coming through all of this like you are now in the 1980s. A lot hasn't changed since the 1980s, but a lot has changed since the 1980s, and I don't think the word transgender really existed in the 1980s. I don't remember, there were people who'd had sex changes and there were transvestites. And I don't, I don't think there was really anything in between as far as I, and there were people, everybody, people like me, were desperate to categorize themselves. I wanted to be gay and I wanted to be gay gay. I didn't want to be LGBT. It was, there was quite a lot of putting yourself in boxes. And I think one of the really big and interesting things I noticed that's different uh, is I talked to quite a few young people who actually don't want to be put in any box. They're somewhere on a spectrum, it's complicated, uh, and nowhere more so is that true, I think, than in the letter, uh, in the letter T. Paris, do you agree with what I've just said? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that it, it's definitely come on a lot in the past few years. And I think you're right, there was this huge kind of debate about transgender being an umbrella term in the 90s. And I really like to hope, to think that we, we're kind of moving back now. And, and I think that we've, we've kind of settled on, on trans and, and transgender and mostly people are kind of happy with that. And I think that it's a natural follow on from you know, the gay rights movement and, and uh, sexual revolution and uh, civil rights, that, you know, th these sorts of things. And for me, it, it annoys me a little bit. And I think the example that I always give is, you know, I've never met anybody with, with one eye before, but if, if I did, then I, I wouldn't need to know why they've got one eye or, or, or what, what they call themselves or, or any of that <laughs> business, you know. You just treat them with the same respect as you would anybody else. So, for me, I, it, it, it baffles me that we even yeah, have to but, raise awareness. But Paris, let's be honest, let's be absolutely honest. I mean, I'm a journalist, okay? I've work, I work on Radio 4, by the way, if you don't know me, and, and Dragon's Den and one or two other things. And I read things about myself in newspapers. And I have little doubt that the most interesting thing about me, for a lot of people, is that I'm gay. And I think being gay is less interesting than being trans. And I'm gonna be rude. One of the most interesting things about you is that you're trans, basically, and you know it, and you must agree with that, right? Uh, <laughs> that was like a primal, primal squeak, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I do and I don't. I'm not completely delusional in the sense that I think that I, I haven't used it to my advantage. And I used to think it was, it, it was quite interesting. I'm kind of really bored of it now. And actually, there's, <laughs> the, there's been other profound transitions for me, uh, you know, like the, the fact that I was in prison and, and now I'm, I'm respectable, if you can call journalism respectable. Um, I, you know, I've, 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 I've dragged myself up from the working class. There, there's, there's lots of different things that for me personally, my, my kind of inner world, are, are just as profound as being trans. But yes, it is interesting. And, um, but I don't know, I just, I actually feel that, um, just to mention Laverne Cox again, who I mentioned earlier, and, and Janet Mark, 
Uh, Janet Mock was on um, Piers Morgan's show in the States recently, and he kind of asked, he was kind of like, oh, wow, you'd never know that you were transgender, you know, obviously not in a, in a northern accent. And... Um, <laughs> It, but I'll do it. In, I'll do Piers Morgan in a Northern accent, and he said, uh, he said, oh, you, oh, you'd never know, and oh, isn't it amazing? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it uh, sensational? And actually, we've kind of been seeing this for the past 60 years, um, documentaries and TV shows, and the Daily Mail does at least this story about three times uh, a day. Um, basically, oh look, man becomes woman. Isn't it amazing? You know, and then, and, and then I feel that we're still here in 2014 and everyone's going, God, it's so amazing. I've never seen this before. And they obviously don't read the Daily Mail or watch television <laughs> or, or documentaries or anything. So, yes, it, it is interesting. But it and is transformation's interesting. But, interesting. But you see, if you, were, if you were, let's suppose you were the editor of the 10 o'clock news... If you put a trans person as your main newsreader, would you would it be distracting to the audience, do you think? I mean, would it be like would that be the most interesting thing about that person? I mean, is that why there is a barrier in the media, do you think, to ordinary roles being filled with trans men and women? I think that's that's a really good question because I think it's really easy as an activist to kind of think, oh, you know, this shouldn't be a problem and, and you know, this is the way we want things to be. But, you know, we live in the real world as well and actually part of the success that I've had is actually recognising the limitations of the structures that I'm trying to kind of, um, you know, climb. And for me, when I was very depressed living in Brighton, I couldn't find anybody like me that was taken seriously in the media. It was always as a sensation or, or as an object of ridicule. And I think that, for me, I'll know that we've, we've really got there. Because you're always going to have bigots, you know. You've always got yeah, racist yeah, yeah. people, Put you've always aside. got homophobes. Put that aside. But, you know, we have had people from different racial uh, backgrounds presenting the news. And I'm sure that was very distracting That's for true. people at I'm first. I'm sure it was. You know, however... We all, you know, the, the sky didn't fall in, it's, it's fine, and we all got used to it. And a stamp of legitimacy was put on faces and identities that we, that we used to think were extraordinary or of note. And I think that there are probably still people that watch the news if, it, if it's uh, a person of colour who's presenting and, and, and just can't take in the news. No, but that's a small number, but I mean, most people watch a black person reading the news, most white people watching a black person reading the news just think nothing of it now because yeah. it happened. And once, it's, once it has happened and it becomes familiar, then you forget about it. Yeah. It's just that initial jump, isn't it, is a really, it's a, it is a big jump. It's the sort of jump to casualization, to, to being casual about it. And so it isn't as interesting as it is at the moment because the truth is at the moment it is very interesting and 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 it is it is just going to take quite a long time i i would suggest before it's it's routine let me just ask you because you're not an entirely uh ordinary selection of people but you're not picked for any particular purpose how many of you would say you know no i.e some to, to say hello to or to you know hang out with a trans person. And I, now, now, just, just, I just want to. How, can all the ones who are trans in the audience not put their hand up? So not, not counting. <laughs> okay. If you're T, I don't want you to put your hand up because that, that's cheating. Uh, how many of you who are not T um, would say you know somebody? Or okay, so it's a very, very high proportion. Yeah, that's very interesting, actually. That is pretty interesting. Paris, tell us a little about your, your journey. You mentioned you'd been in prison. You had a, a pretty tough time. People see you on Question Time. They've heard you on this Question Time. But they don't always hear the, the personal story. Just tell us your journey from sort of age 12 to where you are now. Uh, well, I, I've kind of... I mean, I've, I've been coughing it up a bit recently, but... Uh, I've, I've, I've held up until now about talking about my transition because I really object politically um, to the fact that, that one of the few times trans women have been allowed to speak is, is when we're regurgitating this, this transition narrative. But actually, um, 
I think there is, there is some kind of merit in it. And when I look back at my own life, what I see is kind of like a list of, of the issues that affect transgender people. So I'm, I'm sorry to be so cliched, um, but I was bullied at school and that's something that a lot of transgender people face. Uh, I had family rejection, which is something that a lot of transgender people face. I, I thought that I was, I was gay at first. Uh, you know, I always said that I was a girl from a very young age, again, to be very cliched, but I did. And uh, I was told, no, that, that just can't happen. That's not right. You know, like, you, you've got to be this way. And I think that uh, adolescence is very confusing for me. And I... Uh, I, I was taking a lot of drugs, and I was I was hanging around with with bad people, and I was I was engaging in, in the, risky behaviour in behaviors. the gay scene, the gay male scene at that time, or, or in the gay scene, yeah. And it was really weird because um, I used to go out as a as a kind of like a girly girly gay boy with 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 glitter and and all that stuff and um, little t-shirts and things. And none of the boys, I mean, some of the boys fancied me. Some of, some of the, the older guys that like pretty boys fancied me, but a, a lot of the guys that, that I, I liked didn't like me because I was just so girly. So more often than not, I'd pull on the way home, you know, by uh, straight guys um, that, that thought I was, I was, I was a girl. So, um, but in terms of my kind of, family relationship again this this is something that and research backs it up but anybody who's really spoken to a trans person will know that this is this is so common uh, I had a really strange relationship and I did mention it before about with my dad but with my mum also who had who I'd always had a good relationship with but when I came out as trans around about 18 19 um, I didn't speak to my mum for a while and that completely coincided with me having the poor mental health. I mean, it's so easy to look back in retrospect, isn't it, and say, this is what was happening, but I wasn't getting the right medical help. I didn't have the support of my family. Uh, I was trying to live stealth. Uh, there was this awful situation in the media and all these different things. And, and I was having a really tough, tough old time of it. Yeah, so it was, it was, it was pretty crap. Mm. Well, can I just ask what, I mean, because it, 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 it was bad and you went to jail. What was the thing that flipped it round? Was there some moment where you said, you know, I'm going to take control of this rather than be a victim of it, or what happened? Yeah, and again, it does sound kind of cheesy, like this Damascene moment, but uh, I've, I've always been kind of, uh, I've always, I've always, I've, I've never really gone into details, but I've, I've, I had some really tough times in, in Brighton, and some, some really bad things happened to me purely because I was trans. Uh, one of them, I was, I was dating a guy, and he was, oh, he was so hot. Um, he, was, uh, he, was, he was about 20, 22, 23. He spoke French and, 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 and German. He was really intelligent. He was tall. He, he got like a film, film star smile, and he was a real prince, and I was, I was kind of smitten on him. And he lived downstairs of, underneath, because we lived in the student house, and he, he was kind of all right when I told him that I was, that I was trans because my heart was beating. He said, I, I still like you. I, I, I want to keep seeing you. I want to go out with you. And um, it was just around about the time that I'd started to get a bit more self-respect for myself and, and didn't want to hide the fact that I was trans. But I was still largely stealth. But he said, um, you know, we, we, I, just, I don't want my friends to know about it. And he said, it, it, you know, it, it will be fine. You know, no one will know. And I just remember thinking... This is not right, is it? You know, like I just remember thinking, I, I, I am trans, and it needs to be okay if, if they find that out. And, and basically, I wouldn't say he dumped me, but it, that was it. You know, we just, I, I dumped him. He, he just. It, 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 it wasn't, wasn't going to work. It, it wasn't. It wasn't, wasn't going to work because I refused open. to compromise. And mm. and th there's another thing that happened then that I haven't talked about yet. And uh, I'm saving it for my autobiography. So you'll, <laughs> all, you'll all have to wait for that. But it was it was pretty tough, and it was because I was trans, and it, it led me to feel suicidal. And I I, I genuinely thought, you know, if the rest of my life is going to be like this, I don't want it. And I've said this so many times, but I do think it was sound reasoning because my life then was awful. And if it was going to be like that, and, and for many trans people, it's horrible. You know, you're getting dog poo shoved through your letterbox, you know, trouble with kids on the estate, you know, family don't speak to you, you're getting laughed at in the streets, spat on. This is, this is the reality. This is happening to people. And, and part of me knew that because I've, I've always been quite confident. I've always... Um, you know, been quite uh, 
smart and you know all these different things and you know not not to be arrogant or, or anything like that but I've had certain privileges and I, I do I've, I've always had good aunties and uncles and, and I've enjoyed certain things that not every trans person experiences and and to a certain extent I did blend in even when I was getting abuse every now and again um, I've, I've, I've been quite lucky in the sense that I, I've, I've blended in so I just knew that if this is what I was going through and I felt like I didn't want to live bloody hell what what, what were other people going through that maybe transitioned later or 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 come from you know poorer backgrounds or you know whatever have you have you found love um yeah it's (laughs) he's totally in love with me um no but the the, the other (laughs) side of that is (laughs) i didn't mean to be found people in love with you that i have never admitted any doubt but are you in love with somebody i mean with with him as well yeah that was that was a joke i love him very much um, and I'm, I'm very, very, very lucky because I actually believed during those dark days that I was, I was going to be on my own for the rest of my life. Yeah. And, and, and it happens, you know. It's not just being completely delusional. Some people, you know, do, do spend their lives alone who, who are trans. But I think that's changing. And why is it a big deal, you know, if you, if you fancy someone that's trans, you know? Mm. There's some hot trans people out there, let's face it. Indeed. Fox. <laughs> Let me bring... <laughs> Let me turn to Fox and Ruben. I don't know whether um, any of you saw my transsexual summer that was a few years back on Channel 4. Fox was one of the characters in it. There was Fox and Lewis, Lewis and Fox. They were like Ant and Deck, uh, basically. Um, Lewis was going to be with us today, but Lewis isn't with us. Uh, but Fox has brought Ruben because the two of them are involved in a project called My Generation. Good name, I would say. Uh, Fox, just tell us what the, um, what the project is, actually. Sure. Thank you very much for the introduction. We are very much like the trans Anton Deck. I think it's hilarious, and I, I'm sad that Lewis can't be here today. But Ruben is here, so it's, fab- <laughs> it's fabulous. Sorry, Ruben. Uh, my generation was set up after, um, after we took part in my transsexual summer, and uh, we realized that we could cut out the middleman, essentially. So we thought, well, here's some people making a documentary about us, such interesting subjects, trans people. Um, so what if we started doing it ourselves, considering you know, we've got the technology available to us, um, you know, we're willing, and uh, so we just decided to, to go for it. So I, I won 5,000 pounds on a design competition, a, a t-shirt design competition. And uh, with the money, I bought a really nice camera, I bought... Um, everything that we needed, audio equipment, lighting equipment, and uh, we just went for it. So our first uh, contributor was Ruben right here, fine specimen. I don't know if there's um, the footage, if somebody could, uh, Lauren or Laura, could you? I left home when I was really young, uh, when I was about 15, um, 15, 16, and I think I've really been uh, really independent since then. Um, It's kind of helped me like really uh, grow and know who I am as much as I can and um, you know really be able to look to the future and know exactly what I want and do what I can to get there. I think I'm quite a driven person because of that. Being at uni in Brighton is major. I wanted to come to Brighton since I was about 13. Um, as soon as I realised that I, I'm, I'm male, um, my whole life just suddenly made sense. My reaction to things, uh, my life at school, um, relationships, you know, who I was. Oh. oh, well, you can catch it at mygeneration.com, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we started making these films, and it was this time last year, and we've, we've come a long way since then. So and it, you can see them on the web. I mean, basically, yeah. you can just go straight to the, the, the exactly. website, and you, yeah. you can catch these things. Um, Ruben, I mentioned this thing at the beginning about spectrum, okay? There's... Uh, and I will, I will probably cock up in the vocabulary here, but there's transition, and some people make more of a transition than other people. Talk me through the sort of decision that you go through about where you put yourself on the spectrum. Because it isn't binary, is it, really? And uh, it isn't just this or that. And I, I'm just, I'd like to hear your, your tale on that. Um, that was about a year ago, so I... Um, slightly different now, nearly a year on hormones. Um, I mean, there's, there is a spectrum, and even though that I, I may come across like relatively 
binary gendered. I don't really feel that way. Um, I'm attracted to men, I'm attracted to women. Um, I'm quite like camp with like, when, you know, the way that I speak. I'm quite an emotional person. Um, and that's, quite, that's considered to be quite a feminine attribute. Um, so I don't, I don't really, I sort of feel more masculine on the, you know, from the middle, but not, you know, really far um, onto the male side. I'm quite, I'm quite proud of my femininity in a way. Like, I feel like I can be a better boyfriend, better friend, uh, a, a better man because I embrace uh, my history. So I'm quite proud of that with myself, really. But you, but you, you put yourself in a box. You're, gonna, you're calling yourself a man. And I mean, it's, it, so there's a degree of kind of, you have to sort of place yourself somewhere, I suppose, do you? I mean, it, the, the notion of gender is useful to you? I mean, gender's ingrained in society in, in every way. Um, I don't think boxes really need to exist personally. Um, I don't think people always do fit into boxes. And when we create these boundaries to divide people up, that's when there's casualties. So I think if the, the lower down the boundaries are so people can step over them if they want to, um, the better, and then the more people are happier. And, and, right. um, so we don't need to make too much of these categories, even if no. we stick to I buy mean, them and use them in our casual everyday language. They can be useful to some people. Some people are born with male genitalia, some people like that. Some people are born with female genitals, some people like that. Like, it, it can be very useful to a lot of people, but not to everybody. Mm. So to put too much influence on that, I think is destructive. Mm. Um, Fox, tell me about yourself. Actually, in the program, My Transsexual Summer, which probably should have been My Transgender Summer, if I think if we were being purist about it, um, in the program, I think you, you in, in the first episode, you were saying, oh, I feel like I look like a lesbian. <laughs> and there was a nice line about, uh, okay, guys, you shave, women, you go and shave. And there was a, quite a lot of that, but there was quite a lot of focus on facial hair. And you've, you've come some way since the uh, program. Yes, I've, gr I've grown a little bit myself, which is exciting. It's funny for me because I, I, used, to, um, I used to kind of be a transvestite before that. I was a drag king and uh, I really enjoyed packing and, and binding and, and putting on the facial hair. So uh, it's, it's so nice to have my own and, and obviously I feel like I'm a full-time human being now, which is really nice. Um, it, it's a fascinating thing, isn't it? I mean, um, I don't know, gender is a, gender's a funny thing and I, I have come a long way, but it, it's, I always felt the same inside, obviously, you know, that, yeah. that hasn't changed at all, so. It, Paris, give us a little view on how many places there are in the spectrum and a user's guide to non-trans people as to how you think about people on that spectrum. Oh, that's tricky, isn't it? Um, I think I wrote recently that there's as many gender identities as there are people. And I'm all for people, people doing that. And I think if, if you really kind of like pushed me to, to, to say what my gender identity is, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm a transgender woman. I think it's like a really useful um, shorthand. I'd, I'd just say that I'm me and, and this is kind of how I like expressing myself. So I think... Um, you know, people have a right to do that, but at the same time, you know, in, in many ways, we, we, we do go to kind of categorise people, don't we? But because um, I, 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 I mean, where I, I'm torn on this, because I hear everything everybody says about how we don't want to put people in boxes, but I know that the way human beings make sense of the world, not just about people and sexuality and gender, but the way we make sense of the world is we put people in boxes. We buy a dog, the first question is, which, which kind of dog is it? And you're thinking, you know, which, it, 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 it's just, what kind of food are we gonna have tonight? You know, is it gonna be Indian or Italian or French? And it, it, it is just the way human beings think. And it's, if you're, if you're asking human beings not to think in a way in which they simplify the complexity of the world by having a few categories, you're not just up against innate conservatism about what human beings are meant to be like. You're up against a whole cognitive system that human beings have evolved over a long period. Okay, so just a few thoughts while, while you're mm. talking. Um, when it comes to pronouns, for example, 
you know, there, there are various different kind of gender neutral pronouns that, that, that different people prefer. And I'll, I'll be honest, that's something that I struggle with a little bit because I just think it would be nice if we could just use they, you know, because it's, it's something that people understand. And I think that, you know, may, maybe we should have more. And, and theoretically, I agree with that. But how realistic is it? Because, you know, maybe everyone would, would have something slightly different. So it's it's... It's, it's a tug, isn't it, between you know, the way things are and what we accept and, and, and in, in an ideal world. But I think actually, probably, y you can't stop putting people into boxes and, and people are gonna do that. And we put ourselves into yeah. boxes, you know, I do that. But I think the difference is, is how much importance we place on being right. in those boxes. So just to bring in race, and again, I, I don't wanna kind of like detract from, from other people's struggles. And obviously, we've all got a race on top of being trans as well, you know. However, I think if, if you're working with someone and they're from a different racial background you might put them in a box in your mind yep. they might put themselves in a box you might you might think of that yeah but it, it, it shouldn't really affect anything i think the thing with gender when you put someone in a box it means okay that means you can't go in that toilet you know, I know. Well, that, exactly this and is i think the that, word, that is you know? i think that is the elegant way out of this it's not that you don't want to think of people or, or, or loosely sometimes put them in boxes but you really need to ask yourself how much weight am I putting on that box? And what yeah. am I, what boundary am I building up or cage am I putting them in when I, when I do that? Can, I, I'd like to take a few contributions. We only have a few minutes. It's all uh, rushes by, but there's a gentleman there. If we can get a mic to him, hold your hand up. Tell us where you're from and where you're coming from. Can we get a mic? Have we got a mic running around? Come on, guys. Shall I run down with this? So, Go on, Paris, give him the mic. Thank, that's great. <laughs> you, you're privileged. Look at that. Right, Thank stand so up. Much. Tell us where you're from as well and your college. Um, I'm, Barry, I'm from Harry London. I was last at Queen Mary. Right. Uh, I'm afraid the question is mostly uh, back to you because you mentioned gender pronouns. I wondered how much of a difference do you think Facebook's new choice of allowing people different ways to identify themselves is going to make? And also if there's a means to subvert that for the rest of us to help with generalizing. Very good question. Let's talk about gender pronouns. I'm going to let you two have a comment on this as well and what you, what you like in the way of gender pronouns, but you go first, Paris. Again, because um, I, I wrote a piece on it, so um, there is part of me that thinks there's 55 different things here and I just think, who, who is going to get that? How much currency are these things really going to get? Yeah. But then the other part of me thinks, okay, well, I might, I might not really get it, you know, or, or, or why it's so important to some people. But at the end of the day, if it makes some people happier and it, and it annoys Daily Mail readers, then it's, it's probably a, a really good thing, you know. Um, but I think also we, 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 we do have to be realistic. And I, I'm not sure how realistic it's going to be. I don't know if in, in 50 or 100 years' time we're going to be, um, you know, living in a world where... The, we've all got these different gender identities that are all equally valid. Um, I think, for me, the, the most realistic thing is, is, is just gender becoming less important. Coming back to what I said, mm. we could have a box which really detailed your, your racial background. And there's so many different ways. If, if your mum's Irish and you've got a, 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 an Asian granddad and, and you know, all these different things, are, we could all do that ad infinitum. And you know, we, we do to a certain extent, but I just think, I personally don't think that's the way forward for me. Ruben and um, Fox, tell us, what, what do you think of pronouns? How do you like that? Take that one. Just, just thinking about the... Is it working? Hello? Yeah, yeah yes. it's working. Just thinking about the, uh, the Facebook, um, you know, the, the categories and everything. And it seemed ridiculous that it was so many, but then I read that it was created by a trans woman who works for Facebook. So I thought, well, that was, that kind of changed my perspective in some ways, because it was almost like somebody from our side creating something like that. So it, the, the thought that went into it must have been quite, you know, she must have thought a lot about it and uh, realized that we must, you know, that we need to have so many categories, you know, for us to fit into. Mm. It, is it a trial at the moment? Is that, is it just America or? or? I don't know, actually. It's, it's in America, but I think they're gonna roll it out, apparently. Right. And there've been issues, haven't there? I think the Germans are, are introducing a, an extra category. On, on, a, on a passport or in, in, on birth certificates, I think, yeah. Thanks. 
<laughs> I mean, um, MX, like MUX, is a title being widely used in Brighton now uh, that's being rolled over hopefully across the country and going to be available to people. Because I think that's what the important thing is, is like whether 50 different words are relevant to my gender, they can be relevant to hundreds of other people's genders. And just being there as a box can be very validating for people's identity. Yeah. Feeling that they're recognized in something as mainstream as Facebook can be really important. And, and it's not there to be taken, you know, everyone has to out themselves or not live stealth because they, they need to choose this box. It's only there so people have the words to describe themselves if they feel like that's what's best for mm. them. Um, and I mean, we talk about this a lot at university, like does language create reality or does reality create language? Is there, could there be loads more gender identities, loads more ways of categorizing ourselves but we just don't have the language for it yet? Like, do I feel like I need to take he as a pronoun because I look and act and behave as a man, you know, stereotypically in society? Or is it because there isn't a word that I feel that fits me better than male? But I mean, you, you, you've got a face, haven't you, that there are two words, he and she, that will cover to the satisfaction the vast bulk of people, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but 98% of people will be covered by two very simple categories. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm coming back to just the way we think. You, you don't want to have like another thousand words for, for people, because people just won't know what they all mean. And I, I don't know whether it worries you, but I'm already worried that the vocabulary is actually leaving some people behind. That, I that, don't... That even people who try to be quite informed have no idea now what mm. some of these, how some of these terms are used. Is that a worry or is that because the people have not made enough effort? I, I, I really don't want to like annoy people because you know I, I feel that anything that kind of makes trans people happier is, is, is a good thing. Yeah. But I think that, come on, look at, you brought in titles and is it MX, Mix that you said. So I think that with with a push, we might be able to get that on forms and things like that. But the thing is, come on, look at Ms. Yeah, I fully support Ms. I've been Ms. since I transitioned. I was always a fan of Ms. even before I transitioned because it always struck me as really stupid that we differentiate between a woman being married and, and not being married in a way that we don't with men. But, you know, women are 50% of the population. The Women's liberation was a huge thing in the Western world. And, and it... And, and, and what we've got from that in terms of titles is Miss, Mrs and Ms, you know, so I think we could try and push, but I don't think the option is more boxes because there's going to be other people where MX doesn't feel right for them. So, you know, I would just like to see that gone completely. You just don't want the can, box at all. Yeah, the yeah. Mr. Yeah, you just, just have a name. A name is very personal. Yeah, you know? That's another, another point of view. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look, let's take another, a, a last question because I do want to be able to open the floor. We've got a gentleman over there stand up put your hand up very high so the mic person can see you yes yes wave it around that's it the mic is coming your way and you're going to tell us where you're from um not quite on the gentleman thing i'm emily i'm from cornwall and um i was just wondering how you felt um your experiences with transition regarding the nhs have been and gate the nhs the nhs and or however um that like however your transition came about and because I've seen a lot of examples of what's known as gatekeeping like in kind of gender clinics and everything in terms of like denying people transition unless they fit um, certain criteria for example. So just wondering thoughts on that? Very, very good, very good question. We'll just run down the, um, run down the, uh, the row. Yeah, Fox. So the question's about the NHS yeah. and, uh, and whether we feel that it's, it's good enough or, or kind of it, on our side? Is that the question, generally? Yeah, that's okay. basically it, yeah. Sure, well, um, uh, personally for Ruben and myself, and I don't want to speak for him, but um, we, we kind of went through a similar process in many ways, even though we're 13 years apart. Um, when, when we decided, the day we decided that we, who we were and what we wanted to do about it, i.e. medically transition, uh, I, I was ready that day to start taking hormones. Um, and I think Ruben was too. Are you Ruben? Anyway, and um, so it, it wasn't fast. It wasn't fast enough at all, and, and I think that it, it affected my my well-being by having to wait for someone to tell me that I was a man, and, and it, it it felt like a really really long time with you know two appointments before you can even start to get hormones. So I eventually I, I went I went privately, and I didn't have the money, but I still did it so I could get that prescription, the private prescription. 
and that saved my life. It was amazing. And it was at the time that I was just starting uh, on being filmed for my transsexual summer. And I guess I was very vulnerable at the time as well. So, um, Ruben? Actually, that doesn't sound great then, basically. No. Uh, Ruben? Um, I mean, you mentioned criteria. And there's something that's, that's brought up um, a lot with the NHS is that I, I went privately, as Fox said, um, and I got hormones. Um, and I've, yesterday, I got my surgery date for top surgery. Great. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, and part of the criteria for me getting that is that I'm a passing, like a cis passing man. Um, well, I think I am anyway. You might have a different opinion. Um, and that is criteria. If, if I'm seen to be passing and functioning in the world, um, then I'm more likely to get fast tracked into surgery. And I don't think that's fair because not everybody has that privilege. And I know being cis passing is a privilege and not everybody has that. Um, and I definitely count my lucky stars um, that I'm one of those people that, that um, has the ability to do that. Um, I mean, if you look at the suicide rate or the um, percentage of trans people who have suicidal ideation in their lifetime at some point, um, it's incredibly high. Um, it's about 50%, or I, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but it's, it's a lot. Um, so if you look at the standards of care from the NHS and within uh, an oppressed minority of people that have such a high suicide rate, it, it just doesn't seem to, to coincide. If we're getting the correct care um, from uh, the national health, then um, that rate shouldn't be as high as it is. And I, and I think they have uh, more of a duty than they're giving us uh, for the, uh, the whole system of care um, rather than just medical transition. Um, and I know a lot of things can push people back in the system, like having other mental health issues um, not related to their gender identity can push people back years. Um, and things like falling between gendered clinics, uh, they all sometimes follow their own pathways. If you move within the country, that can really push you back as well. You can get lost in the system. I mean, there's, a lot, there's lots of glitches. Um, and I know that Charing Cross, the, the London uh, gender clinic, aren't taking any more referrals, I've heard. I don't, you know, don't quote me, uh, for another year or so because they can't cope with the amount of people that they've, uh, they've had referred to them. Um, so it's just a... Um, Where would you go in Europe if you were a health tourist and you were trying to go around to a place that had the sort of best practice, would it be the Netherlands? Where, 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 where is, is there anywhere that does this well? It, it depends if you're talking about top surgery or, or lower surgery, I suppose. If you're talking about top surgery, um, it, it's a personal preference. Uh, actually, Ruben's going to the best, I think, in my opinion, the best guy in the UK. Um, but he, um, does, does he do private? He does private stuff as well. So, you know, again, again it's mm. one guy that we can think of who, who's really... Yeah. Really talented. But is there a country in Europe that does it? Is there one that we know is sort of, sort of the best? Belgium for lower surgery, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, for, for, for top surgery uh, in the States, they've really got, got right. it going on. Garamoni mm -hmm. in America. Paris, NHS. Oh, God, this just annoys the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> I said earlier that one of the biggest issues um, that LGBT people face is kids being bullied in school, and that's definitely true because uh, that affects who you go to become as an adult and, and your self-esteem and stuff. But I think probably for trans people, how can you do anything if you're not well, you know? When I first transitioned, um, just to bring it back to my uh, miserable days in Brighton again, um, I, was, I was essentially, you know, I hadn't had any kind of medical help. I didn't have any kind of psychological help. I was just wearing clothes that I bought from Topshop. And, you know... I didn't always blend in and I did have issues to deal with and I, I you know, I had uh, facial hair that I was, I, was, I was doing prostitution to go and pay to get rid of and stuff, you know, so I was dealing with all of those things of having a slightly masculinized body and wanting to be female. Well, how can you get on with your life and have a prosperous life if you're doing that? And actually, after that moment that I decided that I wanted to kind of, you know, be a campaigner and do all these different things. One, one of the first things that I did was, was go to my GP in Brighton and insist that I was treated. And he was really, really good. But I'd actually been to the doctors in Nottingham a couple of years before and they didn't know what to do with me. So I, I really resent that I had to waste two years of my life feeling depressed, not having that help. Because let me tell you, as soon as I started taking those hormones, things started getting better for me. I started growing breasts. I was able to go down the beach for the first time living in Brighton. I got cognitive behavioural therapy. I started leaving the house more. All of these different things. And this is why it annoys me, because 
trans people have been seen as, as the problem. And actually, the, the problem is not trans people, the problem is society not accommodating trans people. And when you give them help, when you give them support, when they're given what they need, when, when we are given what we need, we can go on and flourish and prosper. And everybody should have the opportunity to do that. And it's an absolute crime that there are people that I know that are struggling with yeah. their GPs uh, and getting told the most outrageous things. And let's face it, the reason that it's not really being talked about is because we're not a powerful minority. So, um, you know, it's, we need to create empathy and, and, and let people know what's going on. So how, many, how many trans people are there in the UK? Do we know people who would identify as trans? Well, are we talking, it's 200,000? Oh, it, how long's a piece of string? Um, it's, I mean, suppose it's back to the spectrum, <laughs> isn't there? But I mean, you know, people who would say, I'm trans, that would be... I think Does anyone know the answer to that? Because I don't, I have to say. I think it's We've got a actually, gentleman on a calculator here. He's oh, he's Googling. Someone's uh, Googling I, I, it. I have some okay. rough, rough figures. I think Jaya's Gender Identity Research Education Society did some... And I think they put it like about a million people that are kind of affected right. by transgender. So it may not be may people not be who, as many as that. their family members that or be, partners. And that, that's the kind of people mm, that it's in their lives. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them would be... Yeah living with it utterly un, 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 un publicly. Yeah. Look, I think we need to leave it there. We're still looking up on Google the, uh, the precise uh, 300, number. 300,000. 300,000? Yes. Okay, yeah. there you are, 300,000. Um, it's very it's, rough. It's, it's not very rough because we don't really know and it's, very, it's hard to define very precisely. We've got just, do you want to sh shout a comment? From a, a, a statistic, we don't know overall figures. The number of people presenting each year is, I believe, doubling each year. But we're fixed at treating, I believe it's 150 people a year. 150 a year being treated. And that is ridiculously small. But the numbers of presenting and is, is doubling. this is potentially a huge right. problem. So, of course, there's a big pot of people who would previously have just shut up and lived miserably and now are, pre uh, are now presenting. Well, I would like there to be more statistics on this, because when there are statistics on this, then people will take the whole thing more seriously. I think statistics are particularly difficult, though, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, of, of course. I'm being a little ironic. Statistics do make a difference, so they can throw light. We need to leave it there, ladies and gentlemen. You've got a packed afternoon, and you've got a lot of fun things to come after this very, very fun session. Let me just, though, thank my three wonderful guests, uh, Fox, Ruben, and Paris, uh, to you. And Paris, if ever anyone is going to read the 10 o'clock news, I want you to be the first one doing it. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Good.